Facebook Live, YouTube, or mobile app later. This is uh, East Coast Church here in Ringwood, New Jersey, or at the Skyline Lakes Fire Department. We meet every Sunday at 9 o'clock. If you're there, I'd love to see you. 10 o'clock. Oh, I'm sorry. 10 o'clock. <laughs> I've been correct. You might be here tonight. Well, yeah, we do meet at 10 o'clock every Sunday here at Skyline Lakes Fire Department. So thank you guys for that correction. And I uh, look forward to uh, sharing a word with you today. Uh, this word is not only for our church, but it's also for other people. I think I think it applies to by Christ. But we're looking specifically for some things today for our church here at East Coast Church. The title of this is Looking Ahead. The future for East Coast Church, or it could be the future for, even for you, uh, your church, or you're somewhere else. Encounters with the Spirit of God. We're going to start seeing more and more encounters with God's Spirit here at East Coast Church. Some of these things I'm going to be sharing with you are coming from things that God spoke to me directly, I mean, Pastor Kim directly at the conference we were at recently. And uh, so we're going to be, you know, sharing some of these things with you. And one of, the, one of the biggest things was, uh, the, right off the bat, was sharing with me is it's time for us to have more encounters with the Spirit of God. We spent two years laying the foundation of this church and uh, foundation of basic, basic Bible doctrine. You know, we went over prayer for, uh, you know, ten, eight to ten weeks. We did finances. We did righteousness, prayer, faith, all sorts of topics, uh, victory over darkness. In order to get a foundation for all of us underneath our lives spiritually. And we have not really gone very far into encounters with the Spirit of God purposely to make sure our basic foundation was the Word of God. Now, the other side, or the other part of the foundation is God's Spirit. And we're going to start having more encounters with the Spirit of God. If, if you look at Acts chapter 2, you know, in, in that scripture, you know, in verse one. You know, when the day of Pentecost is fully, is fully come, they are on one place, in one accord. Mm -hmm. That's a miracle by itself. Mm -hmm. Getting a hundred people to agree about the same thing is a miracle. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I didn't put that scripture up there, but you can look that one up if you like to. And as as it, as it goes on, it's also the fact one of the things we see in it. I'm gonna go here from my phone to it since I have to stick it up there for you guys. And uh, one of the things about the Spirit of God is that when people get into unity, and it doesn't take many at, 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 you know, at all, but when people come united as a church, spiritually as a force, two or three people can move mountains. Mm -hmm. Two or three people can move a nation. It doesn't take many. And so we are believing now that we're getting to a point now we've got a core group of people that's strong, and united together, there's no division among us. I think God has weeded that out here recently. And because of that, we're going to start seeing the suddenlies. You're going to see, start seeing more suddenlies in your life. Or you need God to suddenly do something, He's going to start doing it because you're in one accord in one place with Him. Amen. So when we're individually in one accord in one place with Him, we'll see the suddenlies. When we're that way as a church, we're going to see them. And that, and that, that, that excites me. For them, suddenly came a sound of, of, from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, filled all the house where they were sitting. Our suddenly may not be a rushing mighty wind, but it will be a sound. It will be, it'll be God sounding to us in our spirits what he wants us to do. You're going to have favor beyond anything you've ever seen before in the days ahead. You're going to have money come from unknown sources that have never given to you before. You're going to have things that happen in your favor that would never have happened otherwise without you being united to God. You might even see uh, if in the days ahead, you know, court cases where you know you have favor in court uh, because of your of your relationship with, G, you know, with, mm -hmm. you know, with Jesus. So we're going to see a lot of these suddenly. Verse three appeared unto them, cloven tongues like a fire, and it set upon each one of them. So when you get united, and the Spirit of God starts falling, it touches everybody. That's one thing we love about this conference in, in Tulsa World Outreach Church. They're one of the few churches left in Tulsa who allow for the Spirit of God to move. There's not many to do anymore. There used to be almost every charismatic church did. Mm -hmm. They quenched that. And, and and let me tell you what's happened. I even spoke to some of the churches when we were back there. Uh, if you remember back in the 70s and 80s, uh, that was a great time of teaching in the body of Christ. A lot of teaching went, went on. And it crept a little bit into the early 90s. But I moved to Tulsa back in 1983 in August. We drove in from the west side of Tulsa, and we hit a line about 10 miles out, and I went, oh, 
we just changed something just changed spiritually on on the highways north south east and west of tulsa there were there are documented spiritual lines that when you cross them in your car you can feel spiritually something just changed and the reason for that was every night in tulsa that time there were at least 50 prayer meetings holy ghost led prayer meetings going on in the city every night it was 50 of them and during that time that those things were going on, like we, we got to 10 years into it in 1983. And that continued through the 80s into the early 90s. And then you, and, and so there was this prayer time prayer going on all, all the time in Tulsa. During that same time, all these churches exploded and became mega churches. The victory went from 200 to 15,000 in 12 years. Okay. Grace Fellowship started with, with about 500 they went to 5,000. Rama exploded. Uh, I said in church in Rama my second year, and I kept hearing another Kenneth Hagin Jr. say, someday if I or if I ever pass a church again, I need the guy next to him. He said, there'll be a church here next year. I said, how do you know? I said, it's coming out of his mouth. Listen to it. It's, mm -hmm. it's, in, it's in his heart. And he'd been nothing but an evangelist his whole life. Now he's, he's been passing the church over 20 some years. <coughs> and he, he got it where he was running eight or 9,000 people. Church on the Moose with Willie George. First Presbyterian downtown, multi-thousands. First United Methodist. First Lutheran down. These, all these churches just exploded. Uh, because why? Because of prayer. Mm. Because of prayer during that time. By the year 2000, you couldn't find hardly one prayer group in Tulsa anymore. Mm. And from 2000 up to today, there's a very little prayer going up to see at Tulsa. Mm. And it's gone backwards. Some of these churches that had thousands, Mm -hmm. I have hundreds of them. I mean, hundreds. Mm -hmm. uh, so most of them have 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 been struggling financially. Mm -hmm. Only a handful of them have survived and gone on and really and really stabilized. Most of them haven't grown that much in the last 15, 20 years. Uh, some of them are about four or five of them are, are doing some really great things, very stabilized. But a lot of them have had trouble. Why? Because the prayers have been diminished. Prayers have gone away. It's not like it used to be with the people with prayer meetings everywhere. Mm -hmm. I'm believing for us in North New Jersey, we're going to start seeing that here. People desiring to pray. In our church, we're going to become more of a prayer, a prayer in the church in the days ahead. And that means that individually, we're going to pray more. And we'll talk about that a little bit later, about how the seeds of revival need to be prayed out and how we're going to do that in the days ahead. So we saw that, and we've seen that happen throughout the history of the church. When people pray, God moves and things happen. Mm -hmm. When people quit praying, the church goes silent. One of the reasons we have the mess we do in our nation today is because the church has gone silent over the last 25 years. Nationally, we've gone silent. And because of that, and people have deterred other things. Now, church is not that important. Other things have become more important than church. You know, if you're going to give God, imagine this. You have a job. You have a full-time job, full-time benefits, salary, and you go to work every day. What would happen if you decided, oh, I think I don't feel like going this mm -hmm. kind of next couple of weeks. Uh, I'm just going to go wherever I feel like it. <laughs> you going to last long that job? <laughs> That's how God's been treated recently in the last couple of decades by a lot of a lot of a lot of His people. Won't come to church, scheduling out other things on Sunday morning instead of church, and not want to be in church. Want to do other things. If you give God, a, you know, put them on a part-time basis in your life, you're going to see a part-time manifestation right. of your life with God. Right. And when you need God, so turn to God, you're going to turn to other things. And that's what's happened to our nation. So we need to bring the nation back. Verse 3 says, They're appeared in the clothing times like a fire and set on each one of them. I believe we can pray down the fire of God in North New Jersey. I fully believe that. I've seen that before. I've been a part of that. So that's one of the things we're going to do in the days ahead. We're going to pray down God's fire into this place. What happens when fire of God falls? People get healed. Mm -hmm. Find anybody touching them. People get delivered with no one laying hands on them. People get saved without even being told how to get saved. Amen. Amen. People get restored supernaturally. You start seeing uh, signs and wonders and then miracles. You know, I'm going to say this, this in passing because most people don't understand this. You see, we've heard that phrase for years, signs, wonders, and miracles, right? Mm -hmm. On the way over here, we drove you know, from the hotel here. We saw many signs. Mm -hmm. Signs inform us. Mm -hmm. It was information that we need to have. Mm -hmm. That goes signs would inform me. Uh, you better stop. You better yield. You better. It's time to go. Uh, there's other signs that tell you where to park or not to park. Mm -hmm. 
So signs inform you and also instruct you. 30 miles per hour, 25 miles per hour, 40 miles an hour, tell you how fast they go so you control the traffic. So signs inform and give us direction. They are to lead, signs are to lead us into wonders. Now what's a wonder? It's when God does something that just makes you wonder. You're like, how did that happen? But God. Signs bring you to wonders. Wonders then take you to miracles. And most people don't know this, that that's how those three work together. Mm. They think it's just signs. No, a sign is getting you ready for a wonder. It's showing you information and directing you into a wonder that becomes a miracle. Mm. Let me give an example of it. Moses in the Red Sea. Remember when he was ankle deep in water, had his staff, and the Red Sea was right in front of him. Mm -hmm. Nothing happened until he pointed that staff and start talking. And when he did, that water stood up on both sides. They said it was as tall as nine feet in the air. Dry ground in front of them. They went across. The sign was it meant ankle deep water and I was going to stretch out your staff. Why? Because that gave direction. You hear me? And instruction. If he doesn't step in the water and hand, put the staff out and then talk, the water doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. But God told him what to do. As he did it, the water stood up on both sides. That's a wonder. If you had been, I would have been like, damn me, how's that staying up there? How am I not getting wet? Not in a mist of water. I mean, dry ground. Mm -hmm. To me, that's a wonder. It's a miracle. And, and no, it's a wonder. And then the miracle of it is the water stayed put oh. until they got all the way across. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then the water came down upon who? The enemy. And he stored the enemy. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. So signs point you to a wonder that becomes a miracle. And we need to see more and more of that in North New Jersey. Mm -hmm. We need to see more and more of that in this country. And I believe we're going to in the days ahead. And uh, I don't know about you, but I'm excited about seeing that. Verse 4, they all were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with their tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. We've taught on this before. We've done this a little bit more, but in mean, our service here, more and more of the days ahead, we're going to speak in tongues more. We're going to move the Spirit of God more and, and let the gifts of the Spirit operate in here more. Uh, we need the supernatural power of God working in our midst, among us. Has anybody but me ever had someone come up and talk to you supernaturally and you knew that only you and God knew that, and yet this person's talking to you about something? Mm -hmm. Did that impact your life? Mm -hmm. It changes you. And then things like that happen. So we're going to see more of that in the days ahead. We're going to see, as we do this, the Word of God being activated. Activated in our life. We're going to see impartations where God imparts to us things about the Spirit. As He does that, He's going to establish us more and more as a church and as individuals. We're going to see increase in our church by associations. That's why we're looking to associate with more people in the body of Christ here locally. Any churches that want to become a part and working together with us, we'll be doing more of that. Uh, the Lighthouse was giving to them is a new association. We're looking for more and more locally to do that with. Mission, the idea of missions is caught, not taught. So we're looking for God's Spirit to really continue to get into us and involve us in missions, like I said, get us to where we're going as a church as well. And one thing that we start doing more and more here is start giving more time for God's presence. God's presence. His presence changes everything. Just a moment his presence can, can bring, bring, a, bring a miracle in your life. It changes everything. That's why we love going to a World Outreach Church and the Fire from the Nation Conference, because they allow the Spirit of God to move. And a few churches in Tulsa that allow him to move. And we saw many lives being changed because of it. Oh, I did put Acts chapter 2 up there. I just got ahead of myself. Well, we can go on the next slide. I go past that. I forgot. I, I remember I thought I did that, but I didn't say my thing. All right. Now, Looking ahead for our church, God's provision is here for us. God's provision is here for us. And so we're going to continue to look for what he's providing. That's his direction in this area, what he's going to be providing for us in the future. Faith, our faith, rescues other people's lives. Our faith in God will rescue other people's lives. Our faith as a church is going to rescue other people who could not get them be, uh, rescued themselves, who cannot get themselves rescued. We're going to be that... That entity is bringing it to them. We have learned as a church to listen 
Now they're going to learn to hear. There's a difference. My wife talks to me every day. Statistics claim that say that I probably talk 7,500 words a day. She talks about 25,000. That's what they tell statistically. I don't know if that's true or not. That's what they say. I think I think it probably is fairly true. I always listen to her. She'll say, "Are you listening?" I say, "Yes." Now, and so I always listen. Mm -hmm. Right. The other day she said, "You're not listening." I said, "Yes, I am. I don't have to be looking at you to listen." Right, right. right. And she said, well, and then she stopped talking. And I said, "I can listen to you without looking at you." Mm -hmm. She said, "You're not hearing." So when you hear, you get whoever's talking to you, your undivided attention to hear, and she wants my undivided attention to hear. So we as a church have learned how to listen to God. Now we're going to learn. Take us that further, learn how to hear from God even better. Find mm -hmm. tune our spiritual ears to hear from God even better. For you to be able to recognize his voice to you. And you know this is God leading you and directing you. We're living in a performance realm in this world today, even in the church realm. We're going to make sure we're not going there. We're not here to perform. Uh, we'll never allow that to happen here in this church. God's, revel God's revelation is stronger than our situation. Never forget that. No matter whatever situation you're finding yourself in, God's revelation or God's revealed knowledge to you is greater than that situation. So no matter, so no matter what you're having, trouble family, employer, kids, spouse, anything, God has knowledge to give you that will help you through that situation. Are you hearing me? Even when you don't know how to do something, you have no clue how to do it, he can show you how to do it. And as he does that, it'll get done. I, I remember years ago, uh, you know, something my car stopped. My car stopped inside the side of the road. And uh, you know what those guys do? We flop the hood up, put our head in there like, you know what we're doing? And most of those are clueless. We just we get out of the car, wife sits in the car, and we have to know what we're doing. And it happened to me one time. When I first when I was in high school, my 57 Chevy stopped running, so I popped the hood. Back then, and back then there was a lot of room in the pen gym. You could stand inside there with all the room. They can't do that anymore. And I looked around, and I said, I remember saying, and this this was after I was, uh, you know, uh, saved. I said, Lord, I have no idea. So he told me, look behind this thing, and I did. I said, see that wire? Yeah, now connect it over here. And I did, and the car ran. Mm -hmm. It was just always here to direct me what to do and how to do it. I knew nothing about the car, didn't know how to fix it, but listen to God and He showed me what to do and it worked. So He'll give you knowledge about any situation you're in. And never again, no matter what situations you are in, His revelation is stronger than what you're looking at. To live in the Word of God releases is released in our action. I should be not live life. Life in the Word of God. When, we, when our life is based on God's Word, we have life in His Word. That will release in our action. In other words, when our faith takes action, God then releases the power of His Word into our lives. Two ways of faith. Two ways of faith can go. Either make it happen or let it happen. Now, there's times I take my faith and I make something happen with my faith that I determine as God has directed me and makes something happen in my faith. If I need to knock down a door, I can knock it down with my faith in God. If I need God to open a door, I can make that happen by my faith in God. Are you following me? But there's another way faith can work, and that is to let it happen. To where you have such a close relationship with God that you and God are so tight that God is leading and directing you, and if you follow him, it just happens. It just happens. That's where you let it happen. Now listen to this. We're not called to respond to the enemy. We're called to lead past the enemy. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me? Amen. We are not called to respond to the enemy. Don't you ever live a life where you're responding to the devil. Mm -hmm. If you do, he will keep you busy the rest of your life, and you'll be tormented. Mm -hmm. We don't respond to him. We do not respond to the enemy. Amen. 
That's what he wants us to do. We don't play that game with him. I'm not doing that. We're called to lead past the enemy. That means God gives us instruction on how to get past the enemy. And how we get past him many times is by using our faith and speaking and telling him where he needs to go. Mm -hmm. We bind him from affecting our lives, our family's life, our kids, our job, and then we lose the spirit of God and follow him. Are you hearing me? Amen. James 2, verse 17 through 20, and then verse 26. This also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But if someone will say, you have faith and I have works, show me your faith without your works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. In other words, when we're in faith, our faith will show works. Mm -hmm. Our faith will show works. You believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know which man that faith without works is dead? Of course, the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So the bottom line here is our faith has to have corresponding action to it. Our faith has to have works that line up with the word of God. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, listen to this. Confr confrontation does not carry comfort. Conf confrontation does not carry comfort. So when you're going to be confronting things, it's not comfortable. That's one of the things how God has created me and personalized and molded shaped me. I do not mind confrontation. It doesn't bother me at all. I learned about confrontation as an athlete, and then I took that, and once I got saved in, in, into being a Christian, and I am not afraid of confrontation with people, with evil spirits, with the devil. It I'm, not, I'm not moved by it. There's nothing man can do. There's nothing man can do to get me to take come off my stand with God. They tried. You can try here in this church. I won't do it. I won't do it. I will not compromise on my stand with God and what God's told me to do for anybody. So I don't mind confrontation. God, now listen, listen, God wants us in confrontation. Now that's not something about going home and arguing with your wife and your kids and your, you know, and they shouldn't do that in that area. In that realm. We're talking about spiritual confrontation. How are we going to change the world if we don't confront the evil that's in the world? Mm -hmm. That's why there's so much evil in the world because the church has kept its mouth shut. We as the church, as East Coast Church in this part of the country, we need to be a voice piece for God. And we need to be able to say, no, that's evil. No, that's demonic. No, that's not of God. Mm -hmm. And then show the community the love of God that would draw them away from that junk to God. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So God wants us to be confrontational. It's time for us to be aggressive with our faith as a church. It's time for us to be very aggressive with our faith as a church. What does that mean? You know, when you have confrontation and you start putting faith out there and becoming aggressive, more aggressive, things get messy. Things can get messy. It's not always pretty. But ask yourself this question. What will East Coast Church do starting right now in our immediate future in, in faith? What are we going to do in faith? God is wanting for us to move out as a church, to move out more visible in this community. Understanding that one victory can change our mentality, one victory can change the mentality of people outside these walls. One victory. You know, that lady that healed of neuropathy on our trip back to Oklahoma, I guarantee you, not only her husband was there, he was a, his eyes were big as bugs. But there's people behind her that know her, know that she's had that for years, and now she's got to get to show them she doesn't have that anymore. That's going to speak loud to them. Mm -hmm. So one victory can change our, our mentality than the mentality of other people. And so we have to understand, this is our day, this is our time, it's our time to step out in faith as a church. A simple act of faith can bring a huge move of God. A simple act of faith can bring a huge move of God. Next week we'll talk a little bit more about the, the Fulton Street Revival in New York City that happened in 1856 to 1857. When we first started going to Staten Island to do uh, some ministry twice a month, before we did that, we went to Fulton Street. We went up and down Fulton Street and prayed 
for the move of God in New York City. I did it years ago. We're going to talk about that prayer revival and what happened, how strong it became. All because a small act of faith by one man. Oh, that's, I'll, you know, I'll tickle your, your ears here a little bit. This one man, by obeying God, with one and one hour prayer meeting that no one showed up for the first time over a course of about a year and a half, they believe over a million people got saved out of that one move. We'll talk more about that next week. In the days ahead, angels are going to bring us more resources that we need as a church. Angels are bringing us more resources. His kingdom is setting, is setting up an anointing. His kingdom is setting up an anointing. And it's time to wake up our country. It's time to wake up North New Jersey with the word of God. Amen. It's time for us to do it now, not wait. And uh, I like this. For us to do this, we have to get the me out of me. I'll say that again. We have to get the me out of me. Mm -hmm. I've got to get Pastor Jerry out of Pastor Jerry mm -hmm. and allow God to move in me the way he wants to move. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So of us making decisions, we need God, everything to be God led and God and God lead us, God and direct us. Nothing affects you when you're prayed up. You ever notice that? When you're per when you're when your life is prayed up and you're perfectly strong, nothing really affects you much. Mm -hmm. But when you're not prayed up, things affect affect us more. And we're all that way. So don't let anything hang on us, it's not of God. Don't let anything hang on us, it's not of God. That means saying no to some people that want to do certain things with them. Our company is important. In the book of Acts, talk about uses the word company, showing that Paul talked about being with his company, mean being that meant being with his type of people, mm. with his people. Uh, so we want people to be where God wants them to be. We want you to be where God wants you to be. Our thoughts that we have are blueprints for action. So we're being led by the Spirit of God and by the Word of God. Our thoughts, being directed by God, are blueprints for action. So things that God has been sharing with us and sharing with me personally, Pastor Kim, these are becoming blueprints for us to take action as a church later. Same thing for you. When you start getting thoughts from God, these are blueprints preparing you to take action. What, what is a blueprint? I mean, Ron knows here, being an engineer and architect, he knows what blueprints are all, all about. Right? And Ron, whenever you have to change a blueprint, is that going to cost somebody some money, mm -hmm. some time, yep. some effort, yep. every time? And you don't start building until the, the blueprint is what? Done. Done. Until it's finalized. Mm -hmm. Do you have to sign off on it? Yep. Mm -hmm. Say. So when you are getting thoughts from God, those are blueprints. God's already signed so to deliver to you. Take, have you take action? Are you hearing me? Stop, stop the wrong thoughts in our life, and it'll, it, stops, it stops us having wrong actions. If we stop the thoughts, we stop having the wrong actions. Now, if I see people whose lives are messed up and they keep making the wrong and bad decisions, the first thing I tell them is, you got to stop those thoughts, capture them, and mm -hmm. say no to them. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. those thoughts are leading to your actions. You want to change your actions, change your thoughts, what you're thinking on. Listen to this one. Conceive thoughts never spoken die unborn. A conceived thought that you never speak out of your mouth, it dies unborn. So it's just so, so listen, just because you have a bad thought, we, that thought didn't originate with you. So that could be the devil throwing a thought at you. It could be the world throwing a thought at you. It could be your flesh. But a bad thought, you might not necessarily be able to keep the, the thoughts from coming, necessarily in some cases, but you can keep from acting on the thought. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if you never speak the bad thought, it dies. Good. And there's never any action behind it. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. This is great to understand in relationships. There's things that I have thought at times and never said to her, mm -hmm. and those died. If I had I said them to her, <laughs> they would not have died. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Guys, you know what I'm talking about? Ladies, you know what I'm talking about in reverse of that? I'm sure you've all had thoughts. I'm sure she's had thoughts towards me that, uh, but she didn't say them. Mm -hmm. It just died and born. Mm -hmm. it, it didn't take birth. Truth and deception are competing for our headspace nowadays. Truth and deception are competing for your head, mm -hmm. for your mind. Both of them are. 
truth, that means God's word is. Deception comes from the end, we know that. They're competing for our headspace. Don't give deception a place in your head. We've walked back into the world that Jesus has saved us from. The church has done that. That's why we have such a mess in our country right now. The church has walked back into the world that Jesus has saved us from. And we wonder why we're not getting the results we need in church. Corrupt minds are trying to influence our kids and families. We know that. We see that here in New Jersey. Uh, we see it across the nation. Corrupt minds trying to tell our kids how to act. I don't know what we can do. We need to do something. And remember this. Deception will make us stupid. And I didn't use the word stupid. Deception will make us stupid and do things we never should have done. We're in a critical time that we need that we need to hear from God. It's a critical time in our nation's history and the history of our church here at East Coast Church that we need to hear from God. It's time that you're ready to run as a church, to run to what God has for us next. Uh, we're free. We get free from being discouraged by what? By joy. Everybody say joy. Joy. Joy, joy can keep us from becoming discouraged. That's why the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. strength. If we're losing our strength, that means we've lost our joy. If you've lost your strength, you've lost your joy. Get your joy back and you'll be strong. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Does it make sense? Good. So we got to keep our focus on Jesus. And remember this. Uh, you've heard me say this before. If you're in the church you're supposed to be in, under the pastor you're supposed to be under, that time, that time, that pastor is going to say something that may be very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. If I never make you feel uncomfortable here, mm -hmm. I'm, either I'm not doing my job or you're not in the right place. <laughs> At times, as your pastor, I should make you uncomfortable with things that I say. Mm -hmm. And so I tell people, if you're in a place that you're never uncomfortable and you're sitting underneath your pastors, uh, either you're not doing something right or they're not doing something right. It could be that maybe they're not. So remember that. Why is that? Listen, God, God makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> Things he shared with me. And I always very real, real comfortable doing that. And uh, and so there's I know I know it was like getting the slack jerked out from me. I mean, I hadn't jerked the slack out of me before. <coughs> you do know what that means, right? Uh, these Midwestern saying that I've learned some people in the East Coast don't know what some of you mean. <laughs> You know what I mean? Turn, turn and slack out, right? So uh, let's just keep our focus on Jesus. We don't get everything we want at times. When we don't, there's a reason for it. If we're wanting something God doesn't want us to have, we're not going to get it, no matter what kind of faith we have. So what does God want? What does God want? Isaiah 40, 29. He gives power to the faint. And be worried, and so then that have no might, he increases strength. So the people who have are faint worried, he gives power to them. And to them that have no might, he increases our strength. I don't know about you, but it's time for us to be strong and stronger than we had before as a church and as individuals. Our East Coast church prayer life needs to improve, both individually and corporately. We need to improve. Revival prayer births a move of God. It's one facet of intercession. Revival prayer is what will birth a move of God in North New Jersey. It won't happen without someone praying. We have to become a church that's going to do that. We're connecting more with the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, and the Holy Spirit, and let Him take us where He wants us to go. This is vitally important. We as a church will start connecting more and more with the Holy Spirit and allowing Him to take us where He wants us to go in prayer. And as a church, are you hearing me? It's one thing for me to pray out of my understanding. It's another thing for me to pray, being led by the Spirit of God, and going somewhere in prayer that He wants me to go. Does that make sense? And that's why it's important for us not only to pray, but also to pray in the Spirit and interpret back what we pray in the Spirit to get the mind of God to hear what He's saying to us. So we need to be able to do both. Those things. Pray in our understanding, in this case, most of us as the English, then praying in the spirit, praying in tongues, and then listening to God to speak back to us, and then praying out the interpretation back in English. And then we'll hear the will of God. We're going to be doing more of that today because we need to hear from God. We need to hear from, 
but God wants to do supernaturally here in the church and in our, in our lives individually. And there's a place you can get in the Spirit of God where you can just get lost in, in the Spirit. I've been there before. When you go so far into the Spirit of God, you just get lost in there. When you get lost in there, you don't want to come out. You just want to stay there. So we want that. We will never move a movement to a movement. You can't move a movement of God to another movement. It doesn't happen. But out of every movement of God comes a remnant of people. Out of every movement of God comes a remnant of people that are growing closer and closer to God who want what God wants. And I believe for people here in this church to want what God wants more and more in the days ahead. Not what we want, but what God wants. So for us to get there, we can't try to interpret God's timing. I'm not trying to interpret his timing in anything. But prayer can change our destiny. Individually and as a church, prayer can change our destiny. So we need to pray out what we need for our future. Whatever you need in your future, what you believe in God for, we need to pray that out and have it based on Scripture. We're going to start praying out what we need as a church, individually, and then corporately as a church, things that we need. So we want to pray out what we need for the future of East Coast Church and communicate what the Holy Ghost says and what he wants to say. What does the Spirit of God want to say to us? We're going to pray those things out. Why? Because the Spirit of God speaks, he guides, and he directs us. The Holy Spirit speaks, he guides, and he directs us. So we're going to press into God's Spirit, and we should, out of that, see rivers of living water flowing out of our lives. The Bible says we should have rivers flowing out of us. So if we're prepared to hear and see what the Spirit of God is doing in our midst, so we can follow Him. Does that make sense? Now remember this. I'm going to talk about for a few minutes before we bring this to a close. Seeds of revival. Revival meaning a move of God. All right? The word revival itself basically means to put life back into that which was dead. And I don't think America needs so much a revival as we need a move of God. We're going to use the word revival in the sense of meaning a move of God. Seeds for a move of God, you have to remember everything starts with a seed. A corporate anointing is needed for revival. An anointing with a group of people is needed for a move of God. It doesn't take many. We have enough here in our church to create a movement here in North New Jersey. Healing is a dinner bill for revival. You start having meetings, people getting healed in every meeting. It's like a dinner bell ringing, and everybody starts hearing and coming to that place. Why? Because people are getting healed. It's the greatest advertiser there is. Is a healing power of God. We've seen that in the last three or four months here. We're going to see more of the days ahead. Prayer waters the seed for revival. Mm -hmm. We start planting seeds of revival. Our prayer over that seed is what gets that seed to grow to bring a move of God into North New Jersey. God needs someone to take the seed and go. And go. Well, we're here. He's giving you to us. Another church as well. We're not the only ones, but we're believing that other churches are doing that or will do that in the days ahead. Yeah. We're going to do that. We're going to plant. We're going to plant. We're going to water. And we're going to harvest. Mm. Plowing is difficult. You ever seen a plow? Mm. I grew up watching these things. I've driven one before. I plowed before, actually. And uh, thank God I had a tractor. <laughs> and not a harness around my neck to some, you know, mule or horse or donkey or whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I've, I've seen it, you know, I'm thankful I had the tractor. But plowing is hard work. And plowing in the spirit, that's where prayer comes in. When we pray for a move of God in North New Jersey, we are plowing hard and ground. The ground here is hardened. Mm -hmm. It's not real pliable. Mm -hmm. But we can turn that ground over through prayer. Yes. Are you hearing that? Mm -hmm. So when we in the days ahead start now that we're having like a night of prayer or time of prayer, we might not have Sunday morning, we're going to pray. That means we're going to plow up the ground. Why? So we can plant seed in it. Mm -hmm. And as we get that ground plowed and start planting seed in it, then we're going to water that seed with our prayers. And then we're going to see harvest of that seed. Mm -hmm. We're going to see a move God. I've said this for years and I'm saying it here. The people where I come from are shaking their head. Why would you go there? 
because God sent us here. That's the only reason we're here is because God sent us. Mm-hmm. But he knew that we would come and do this. And I've told people my entire life, and I tell them now, there's nowhere in the world that the Word of God will not work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's nowhere in the world the Word of God will not work. Oh, yeah, you can take it to any nation, in the most remote places, the Word of God will work there as it will any place else. Mm-hmm. The Word of God will work in New Jersey as it will any place else. Mm-hmm. Wow. It'll work here just like it works in Oklahoma, Texas, Missouri. It'll work, it'll work here like it works anywhere else. It will do what? It will work for work. And we're going to do that. In revival, we don't look for the tree. We plant the seed. Too many times churches are looking for this tree and they never plant a seed. Don't look for a move of God without you taking time to pray, mm-hmm. pray it in. Mm-hmm. Okay, to pray that thing in. Angelic activity increases in a move of God in revival. You'll see more angelic activity. We're going to put a demand on the seed that is in our children's lives. You have children, you raise your children. We're going to put a demand on that seed. Of his word we put in their lives. Mm-hmm. Don't ever give up on your kids or your grandkids. Mm-hmm. That seed's in them. Amen. And they may have gone dormant for a while, but that seed's there. Keep watering that seed to your prayers, kids, speak it over their lives, and you're going to see a change in their lives. They will come back to the Word of God. Amen. Don't give up on your seed and your kids. Ask yourself this question What is in my heart? What does God put in my heart, and will it come to pass? If it lines up with his, with his will, for you, it could. It probably will, if you'll believe. It's time to cleanse the temple, meaning cleanse the church, cleanse our lives, get our lives in order, uh, more in order with God. Make some adjustments where God wants us to make adjustments in our lives. Uh, we, we will do that as a church, as individuals. Confirmation then and clarification come. As, as, we, as we cleanse ourselves and get, not to make ourselves holy, uh, if, we, if we're following Jesus, we become more like him, we'll become holier. But to basically, uh, as we follow Jesus, confirmation and clarification of what he wants us to do will come. It was so vivid when we were in Tulsa at this conference, hearing every day God speaking things to us to share with you to get us ready for a move of God. This whole thing was situated and it kept coming up my spirit. It's time to move. It's time to move out. It's time to get aggressive with our faith. Everything I was hearing inside, I mean, speakers would say things. Yeah, I don't know what it said sometimes, but they would say something, the Holy Spirit would say something to me off of that. And that's what I'm sharing with you today, both of these things, because that's where God wants us to go. Listen to me. When we are doing what God wants to do, we're getting the confirmation of God, the clarification of God, then we'll listen to this. God will back, back up what you initiate. God will back up what you initiate. When you're hearing from God and things are becoming clarified to you, they're becoming clear when you're hearing from God and you start hearing words from God and you start acting those words from God, you start moving out in the things of God, you're going to see the result of that in your life, a good result. And that good result you're going to see is going to show you that God will back up what you initiate. Praise God. I had God one, I had one, God one time I was in prayer and God spoke, this was years ago, I was young, a young minister, and God spoke this to him. He said, "He said you're to a point in relationship with me now that I'm gonna start backing up what you say." Mm-hmm. I went, "What?" Mm-hmm. He said, "I'm gonna start backing up what you say." I went, "Really?" He said, "Really." I never heard anybody teach on that before. I never experienced that before. But I was becoming clear what he was telling me to do, and I know as I started initiating things, as I spoke. He backed me up, and he'll do that for you. If you look back to your life, you've seen it. I know you've seen that, but just remember that. As a church now, we're going to see him back up with things we initiate. Why? Because what we're going to initiate is what he's telling us to do. He's going to tell us to initiate some things. Does that make sense? So what does ECC do next? I'm bringing this to a close today. We're going to start praying for a move of God in North New Jersey and our county here, it's a county. We're going to start making prayer for that every day. I want you in your prayer time to start praying for a move of God in North New Jersey. Put this on your prayer list, things to pray for. If we do that individually, away from each other, let alone we come here, we're going to start doing more and more corporately in our services here, but we do that individually away from here. We're going to unite in the spirit. We're going to see that. See that. 
we are going to now aggressively pursue our next facility. We've looked at over 60 buildings, it hasn't been the right one, but we're now going to be very aggressive in pursuing the next facility. We're going to get really aggressive in And uh, some things we're going to do to become aggressive in that. So I don't know this, I'm not going to put this out there, but uh, I'm sensing the facility God has for us is about to, almost ready to become available to us. Amen. And we're going to find it. You're going to leave us to it, but we're going to now get very aggressive and going after it. We're going to pray people into the church who are ordained by God to be a part of this church. Yes. There are many people that are not here yet that have been ordained by God to be here, who've never come. We're going to pray them into this church. We'll show you how to do that in the days ahead. We're going to prepare to minister to the whole family. To the whole family. I mean, from a nursery, children, youth, young adults, the entire family. We can't do that right here in this place. But we will in a new place. We will not go to a new place that does not allow us to minister right. to nursery, children, youth, and young adults. Amen. If they can't do that, we're saying no to it. But we know there's one out there that can do all that for us. We're going to do that. We're going to start doing more outreaches in our county, in this area. It might be simply just passing out water in the park. You get started. We're going to start doing some things. We might have a, you know, a, a Saturday cookout somewhere in the park, maybe some inflatables. But we're going to start doing some things locally in order to do why right. so it can draw people to who we are you know you start giving away free food and the park people will show up <laughs> mm. yeah. and they'll hear about the church yeah hear about us i'm gonna start doing some things like that in the days ahead so be ready you're gonna be helping us reach people by doing things like that uh we're gonna plan a large event at some point to draw people to us to minister to I have not yet received really a word from God on what type of large event, but I, he dropped that in my spirit almost two months ago. It's time to get ready for, to do a large event that would draw people to us. Now I'm just waiting to hear what that large event is going to be. So whatever that is, large event is going to be, we're going to hear it, and we do this, it's going to work. Now when you do a large event, we don't do it. I want to say this, say this before we close. You don't do large events to get your church to grow. We do a large event to reach more people. I've always said this, and, and never forget this. Churches that evangelize grow. But you don't evangelize to grow your church. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. You don't evangelize in order to grow your church. The churches who evangelize grow. And that's what we're, that's what we're going to become more of. We're going to do more evangelistic work. And as because we're going to reach out more and more, then we will eventually grow. But we don't do the evangelism to grow. We do it to reach people. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. And then lastly, we're going to get more involved in inviting more people to church. We've done a great job up to now, many of us. But when I start looking at those statistics, in the last five years, the statistics show that when you invite people to church, five years ago, it was said that 82% of everybody you invited would come to church. Now it's up to 85%, which means less than eight, less than 15% of people you invite are going to say no to you. Mm -hmm. If you know that going in, I think it takes away the fear factor. So why not invite people if that, if that may respond? And so you say, well, I did that, and they didn't come. Well, that's all. you did it once, so you're over one, right? right? Well, I've done it five times. You're over. So what? You're over ten. What if the next thirty say yes? You don't quit because no one has said yes yet. Are you hearing me? You keep asking, and you'll see it. Some of you have asked people who have come, and we're thankful for that. But we, as a church, have to have to do that for all of us to invite more people to come to church. Do you believe this is a good place for people to come to learn about God? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Do you think this is amen. a safe place for people to come? Amen. Yes. Amen. Would this help somebody? Yes. Would this help your friends? Amen. Your family? Amen. Yep. Then we got to be willing to invite them. Praise God. Amen. amen. And you that are watching wherever you go to church, you know you don't have a home church, you're in North New Jersey, come see us here at East Coast Church. But if you have church, you go to you somewhere else in the world or in this country, in this nation, invite people to your church. You'll be shocked when you say yes. So these are the things we're going to be doing next. 
How many of you say we think it's time to step out and these things? Amen. We're going to start seeing one more of it. Look, you're watching. Thank you for being with us. We pray that God is moving in your area as well. And never forget this. Jesus is Lord. Praise God. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Let's pray.